any expectations for any change to the sort of the, the path of selling that we're on in the near term? What the technicals are saying right now is the selling in the very near term seems to be exhausted. Um, so the VIX, the fear gauge, is above 28. Typically when that rises above 25, that shows there's severe signs of capitulation and maybe selling is exhausted. Um, if you look at advance versus decline ratio within the S&P 500, the, the number of decliners suggests this is just broad. Um, lack of a better term, it's just a puke, <laughs> if you will. I don't know. Um, and then finally, things like RSI, so relative strength indices, which, which show the, um, the number of up days versus down days and the magnitude of those days recently. Mm -hmm very skewed to the downside. Right. That's suggesting things are a bit oversold. Maybe give us some perspective on what things as you see us coming around the corner in January could could ward off the selling or what things could perpetuate the selling. Starting off with what could sort of ward off the selling. One, um, valuations look somewhat reasonable. Finally. Now. Yeah, yeah, for the first time in a long time. Earnings are starting to come out again. So uh, if, if those continue to beat expectations, that can encourage um, some buying. And then as far as what could help, what could hurt, well, Jerome Powell is gonna open his mouth again in January. So if, if he's learned his lesson and the Fed comes out and has a very different tone and is on board for pausing rate hikes and maybe even pausing or reversing the roll off of their balance sheet, that could really, um, that could really propel markets higher. If, if he has another performance like he did in December, then uh, I think you're definitely in more in, in for more downside potential. Um, and then the biggest thing is this equity market volatility we've had and the sell-off, we haven't seen tangible evidence of hard economic data deteriorating yet. So if that continues to come in strong, um, that could encourage some buying. And what hard data points would you look towards that would suggest the worst is not over? Uh, so one that's a, a very high frequency data point that we look at is weekly jobless claims. So you get a, a very quick gauge on the labor market, which the consumer is the biggest engine for U.S. economic growth. Mm -hmm. So you get that on a weekly basis. So those those have not risen dramatically yet. There's there's no it's not even flashing yellow. Uh, it's still a green light. So I guess looking at the highly cyclical hard data points. So those are typically auto sales and new home sales. Mm -hmm. New home sales are a little they have a little better lead than existing home sales because right. they're counted when the contract is signed, um, not when you actually get your home. Uh, so those have already started to break down a little bit. Uh, so definitely monitoring those. And then on the consumer side, looking at things like credit card delinquencies, uh, mortgage delinquencies, those types of things, which aren't quite flashing yellow yet, but definitely be monitoring those.